This video goes along with chapter 14 of this book and in this video I'm going to talk about a bending moment and then I'm going to check the results that I'm going to calculate analytically with help of SOLIDWORKS simulation. So for that I created this uh, Excel file with a couple of images. Uh, imagine a situation where you have two points that are restrained and you have a force over here of 1000 Newton. Then you can calculate easily with the equation of moments or the sum of all moments has to be zero around for example this point would be the easiest that the force over here will be ten times higher than the force over there because of the uh, the relation of these two dimensions so this dimension is ten times larger than this one which will create a force over here that is ten times larger than this one over here due to the equation of all moments that have to uh, add up to be zero uh, so that's the situation when you have two points restrained and here I show another uh, situation that you see in exams a lot for example that you have a pure bending moment that would be a situation like this whereas on the left side here I have a, a force that creates a shear force but also a bending moment and the influence of this bending moment is larger than the, the shear force. So on, uh, on the second page I created a situation of a uh, a fixture on the left side, the whole surface in this case is fixed, not uh, two points. So I imagine a bar being glued to a wall for example. In that case you would have to add up all the sums of all small pieces of area that can deliver a moment. And when you do that you have to integrate the whole solution and in this integration that I've written out here with all the elements of this integration uh, uh, clearly shown what they are, uh, then you have to see that the width of the part is 10, otherwise uh, this um, integration would not be easy to understand. So the width of this part that's not shown in this image is uh, 10 millimeters. So then I've done the integration over here, I filled out the numbers, I'm not going to discuss every step in detail because then the video would become too long. I did the integration and got a, a maximum stress in the x direction of 600 newton per square millimeter. So I'm going to verify that with SOLIDWORKS, of SOLIDWORKS simulation. I'm going to create a new file with a simula simulation template and on this surface I'm going to draw a square and then I'm going to extrude it over 100 millimeters so this one has to be 10 and then the other side should be equal to that so this one and oh, this and this line should be equal to each other in length then I'm gonna extrude it over a length of 100 millimeters and create a new simulation study then I'm gonna fix this side as I did in the in the analytical analytical calculation and then I'm gonna put a force pointing downwards on this area so I can choose the direction and then it has to be a thousand newton to be uh, the same as in the analytical calculation so now I can uh, save this part and then run the simulation and now I see a stress value that's a little bit higher than, than I had expected it to be with my analytical calculation as I shown in the Excel file so I could try to see if the, the mesh size would matter but what I see here is that the Poisson's effect will play a, a big role and I've shown that in previous chapter on the uh, the normal stress so it was uh, chapter 2 of this book and the video that goes along with it discusses the Poisson's effect as well so when I uh, ignore the Poisson's effect so I change the material I've got a material set up here already in my custom materials a steel that has a Poisson's ratio of zero and when I use that one and create a little bit of a finer mesh then the results uh, will be very comparable to the analytical calculation so it was already quite close to the 600 and now I'm a lot closer so if I wanna see what the value of the stress here is on the left side I can probe this over here you see it's quite close to 600 there's a little bit of variation you would get 
get that away when you would mesh even finer and what you can also do is uh, probe for example a whole line like that and create a graph of that and you see that uh, it's a, a little bit higher than 600 at the far end uh, but it's close enough to the 600 uh, so there's only a difference of 10 divided by 600 it's a uh, uh, not a, a large uh, difference between my analytical results and the final results that I'm getting in SolidWorks simulation it's a uh, close enough to accept the real results so that was uh, the presentation on the bending moment thanks for watching